Good evening, everyone. My name is Owen Verna, and I am a sophomore in political science and economics major here at Gettysburg College. Last semester, I had the opportunity to participate in the Eisenhower Institute's Washington Connections program. As part of this program, we were given the, the chance to write an op-ed on the policy subject of our choice. After the January 6th insurrection, I began to closely follow the battles over voting rights at both the state and federal level. So I knew early on that I was going to write my op-ed on the Freedom to Vote Act. So the task with it was ahead, to argue in favor of the biggest voting rights act since 1965, a bill almost 600 pages long in 800 words. Sounds easy, right? Obviously, I cannot begin to cover the 600 pages in detail, but I can give a brief introduction to the three components of the Freedom to Vote Act that are of particular importance following the 2020 election. The first is the expansion of early voting. The bill guarantees two weeks of early voting, including weekend days, and ensures that polling places will always be in convenient places, such as a college campus and establishes election day as a federal holiday. Second is the expansion of mail-in voting. Passage of the Freedom to Vote Act will result in the ability to request an absentee ballot for any reason, no excuse or explanation necessary. Security measures around mail-in ballots would also be brought into line with that of in-person ballots. This would prevent scenarios like in Texas where last week it was reported that 34% of Harris counties 13,325 mail ballots were flagged for rejection, much higher than the rate previously. Finally, the bill will restore voting rights to thousands of citizens who have been disenfranchised due to being convicted of a felony, ending long-standing Jim Crow era laws meant to disenfranchise voters of color. The Freedom to Vote Act sets the guidelines that will allow our elections to function more effectively while upholding the promise of free and fair elections to all citizens. Expanding early and mail-in voting provides a clear path to increase voter participation. Reducing long voting lines, which have been a deterrent to people who may not have had the time to wait in such lines. At times, cities, including larger ones such as Louisville, only had one polling place in the entire city, inevitably leading to excessively long lines on election day. Setting a baseline of two weeks of early voting will allow for citizens to vote on a day does, that does not interfere with work, which is critical to voters who work paycheck to paycheck or are not eligible for paid time off. Likewise, expanding mail-in voting would also reduce lines at polling places and increase the percentage of the population who can cast ballots. Although not widely talked about, statewide vote by mail has already been implemented in states such as Oregon and Utah and has been proven to be extremely secure and effective. In fact, the fraud rate in Oregon in the year 2018 was only 0.0004% of the 1.9 million votes cast. Additionally, designating election day as a federal holiday will allow many people to vote without taking off work or fear of losing pay for exercising their basic rights. The restoration of voting rights to those with prior felony convictions is another provision that is important to enact. You might be thinking to yourself, why would I want to care about felons? Previously, the state in which a person lived determined if they would receive all of their rights back after serving their sentence. Throughout history, segregationists used this lack of a federal voting rights restoration law to disenfranchise Black Americans, locking them up for trivial or arbitrary reasons and permanently revoking their right to vote. Formerly incarcerated citizens are expected to reintegrate into society, which includes paying taxes. Therefore, they should have the right to vote as they've repaid their debt to society. The main criticisms leveled at the Freedom to Vote Act is that the bill is a federal takeover of elections meant to favor the Democratic Party. However, increasing voter turnout has not usually favored one party over another. Vote by mail in particular has shown not to provide a partisan advantage to Democrats. In addition, this bill keeps the administration of elections at the county level, which is a vital measure to ensure an election security is a decentralized process and ensures bad actors at the national level cannot swing the election just because of them. When it comes to elections, larger turnout means our government has to be accountable to all of us rather than just a select few. The bedrock of our democracy is the right to vote, 
And as such, we must not only fight against laws chipping away at that bedrock, but also promote laws that expand voting rights and consequently strengthen our 